Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this is the very first video about my new YouTube channel called The Fish Diary. And this uh, YouTube channel will be mostly all about this tank. So this is a tank that I purchased a couple of weeks ago and it was uh, you know, extremely heavy and extremely difficult to transport. I'm gonna throw in some clips on what it was like to uh, get something like this you know, into my house. Uh, this tank is just enormous and uh, it's also very tall. I'm going to go over the, the, the dimensions in a little bit. So um, when I did some research and you know how to set up a tank like that and what I could keep in it and the lighting and the filtration and all of that, I noticed that there are a lot of challenges that I'm going to be facing. And uh, I did a lot of research on YouTube and watched a lot of videos to uh, you know, try to uh, find information on how to overcome these challenges. So I thought uh, maybe I'm just going to compress all this information that I found out on my own and just uh, put this all in a series of videos related to this tank. So I'm going to be talking about uh, you know, how to set up the lighting, how to set up the filtration, uh, what uh, you know, substrate would be suitable and um, basically anything that I can think of would uh, pertain to setting up this tank because there are a lot of challenges that uh, you may not uh, realize right now. So uh, this tank was probably, you know, if I would say maybe 800 to 1,000 pounds heavy. So it's extremely heavy. It took six guys, including myself, to get this into the house. Um, usually a tank like this is something that is probably being built on site rather than built somewhere and then transported over somewhere else. So it was very, very challenging to get this into my home. But now it's finally here. And uh, let me show you first what the dimensions are. And then we talk a little bit, um, you know, about what possibly I could keep in this tank. Um, so this is kind of like a tank that you would maybe see in a hotel lobby, you know, extremely tall, extremely... Uh, you know, has a big wow factor when you stand in front of it because it's it's so tall that you know I have to look up basically to see the the top of it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let me show you the uh, dimensions and then um, a little bit about the features of this tank and then uh, what challenges uh, that I'm going to be facing when I'm setting up this tank and then uh, go from there. All right, so let's go over this tank. Um, so from one end all the way to the other end. It's almost eight feet, it's about 91 inches. And um, this tank is made out of acrylic. So if you take a look here, it's about one and a half inches thick on both ends. So I'm losing about three inches. So therefore the interior length is about 88 inches. And then from front to back, this is about 24 inches. But um, like I said, I'm losing about an inch on each side or an inch and a half. So I'm basically more like 21 inches in the interior. And then from the bottom all the way to the top, it's four feet, so 48 inches minus the one and a half inches that I'm losing from the uh, top and the bottom. So I'm at about 45 inches. So as you can see, this tank is huge. If I'm standing right in front of it, I'm basically standing in front of a wall of water when it's all filled up. So it's gonna look really amazing. It's basically, you know, the centerpiece of my home. And uh, I think if I set it up correctly, it's going to look really, really nice. Um, so let's talk about one of the first challenges I'm going to be facing. So here uh, you can see my uh, patio. <laughs> so it's going to hit a lot of light. So uh, what I will have to do is I will have to get all of this um, basically covered in um, the same material that you do when you want to get your windows tinted in the car. So basically I'm gonna have all of this tinted, uh, which is something that people usually do anyway to keep the, uh, you know, the electricity bill low when it comes to AC, because all the heat is going to be reflected out and doesn't enter the home. And therefore, uh, you know, my tank will not have all this algae that's, that would happen. Uh, if I didn't do that. So this is one of the first things I'm going to be doing or have somebody done actually. And then if you look on the side here, so you can already see an overflow box. So this is about seven inches by seven inches by 23 inches. And this is going to be where the water will flow in. 
and then I will have a sump sitting underneath where the water will uh, go in, go through all the different chambers of filtra filtration, and then basically it will go back up. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, but up there, if it will focus, um, I will show you later. Basically, this is where the return is going to be, and uh, yeah, so this is what I have planned for filtration. Uh, another thing I want to point out is um, obviously you cannot really see very well inside the tank because it's very, uh, you know, scratched up. So one of the steps that I will have to do is I will have to get this sanded and I'm going to do it myself. And I'm going to show you um, what tools I'm going to be using to sand this down uh, because this is acrylic. So there's, uh, you know, certain steps that you have to follow. There's certain products that you should be using, a certain grid of sandpaper that you need to use, uh, actually multiple uh, types of sandpaper. So everything I learned about sanding, uh, you know, acrylic tanks, I will share that with you in one of those videos. Now, if you look at the top, uh, you see that there are two openings on each side. Um, so this is basically where the uh, lights will uh, sit above. And I want the lights to sit uh, on top of the acrylic itself and try to shine through. I will basically place the lights uh, to be on top of the opening. And I will use this very, uh, you know, thin cover uh, plastic material to keep the moisture in. And if I end up having any fish that are jumpers, uh, this will prevent them from coming out of the tank as well. So let's talk a little bit about what can you actually keep in a tank like this, that is this tall and this long, but it's not very wide, I mean, you know, long from front to back. So a lot of people may think uh, a good choice would be a saltwater tank. And I already have a saltwater tank back there. And I'm going to actually show you uh, what the challenges uh, would be if I was to try to set this up as a saltwater tank. So this is my uh, BioCube. It is uh, 28 gallons. And this is about 20 inches tall. And uh, this light up here is the uh, AI Prime HD from Aqua Illumination. And the issue that I had with this light was that it does, even though I enabled the acclimation uh, mode when I got this light, it was so strong that almost everything on top of the rock burned down and only the corals on the bottom were actually thriving. So this is, uh, you know, a big point when it comes to what I can do with this tank. So let's say I wanted to set this up as a saltwater tank. So the biggest challenge is the height of the tank. It's 48 inches, four feet. And uh, the problem is I would need a light that is so strong, actually multiple lights that are so strong um, to basically provide enough light on the bottom of the tank that anything up th uh, on the higher regions of the tank will basically just melt it would be just way too strong. So what I could do is basically have a bunch of corals, you know, on the bottom region of the tank, but then I would have basically nothing on the upper region. It would look pretty empty. So I don't think that would look really nice. Um, or I could just have only rocks and, you know, no corals at all. But the saltwater hobby is basically all about the corals. And uh, they, you know, they just make, make what this hobby is all about, uh, especially salt water. So I think salt water is out of the question because of that. And, uh, you know, because it's not very long front to back, you know, I would have to basically build a really steep hill, you know, which is also challenging. And uh, yeah, so I decided, you know, salt water on this for this tank is unfortunately out of the question. So now that we've covered what we probably cannot do with this tank, I want to tell you what I think we actually can do with this tank. And I think a tank that is this long and this tall uh, is made to be an Amazon kind of a biotope. So I'm talking about having a really nice background, having a lot of wood, you know, coming from top to bottom. And uh, I think that would look really amazing. And um, the idea that I'm kind of aiming for uh, to replicate uh, with this tank is from a channel called The King of Do It Yourself. And I'm going to show you, you know, some footage uh, from that tank. I'm sure a lot of you know this channel and may have seen this tank. 
So it's basically uh, a tank that has uh, a really professional background. Um, it has some artificial wood. And uh, I think I'm going to contact the very same company that made the same, uh, that exact background and or basically order the exact same background and order and put this in this tank. And um, what when it comes to the plants, so that tank has really nice um, hair grass on the bottom. But the problem that I'm facing with this tank here is if I have a bunch of hair grass on the bottom and if I go up here and I try to do maintenance, I basically, you know, I can't reach to the bottom at all. I, I would need to have a really, really long siphon. And they, there are some siphons that are, you know, three feet, four feet long that would reach on the bottom. Um, but when it comes to trimming plants with a pair of scissors, I won't be able to do that uh, at all. <laughs> because I just can't, unless I actually step into the tank, which I don't want to do because then it would mess up all the interior. So yeah, I'm basically um, deciding if I should do the, the setup with the hair grass, which looks amazing and it, it is my uh, preferred choice. But there's also just the option to do no uh, plants at all on the bottom. So this is something you have to decide. And um, I will let you know, you know what I think would be the best choice. And when it comes to the fish, I think this is uh, you know, a tank that demands larger fish. But I don't want to go into like arowanas because they're, uh, you know, two to three feet long. So they're basically longer than how this tank is wide. So if they want to, if they swim from one end to the other and I want to turn around, they basically have to, you know, go down <laughs> in order to swim into the other direction. And th that to me is a sign that this tank is basically not uh, big enough front to back. So I think the fish that would be you know perfectly suited for this tank at discus fish. So I, I'm thinking about maybe you know a group of 10 to 12 fish. But when it comes to discus fish, the uh, problem that I'm facing with them is they're very very messy eaters. Uh, so that means a lot of food is going to end up in the back and the, on the bottom. And if I have a bunch of hair grass on the bottom then uh, you know a lot of food is going to get stuck on the bottom and I need really really good um, bottom feeders. So the problem with the discus fish is they need temperatures anywhere from 82 to 86 degrees Celsius. So when it comes to uh, the bottom feeders that can live in that uh, kind of uh, temperature, I'm talking about maybe maybe uh, sh some amano shrimp if they are tall enough, I mean uh, big enough so they don't get eaten. Um, because uh, discus are cichlids, so they are going to hunt for food as well. And uh, another choice would be Corydora sturbis, but the problem with the cori fish is they're going to dig up uh, stuff on the bottom, so they, they may be, be able to unroot the plants if we have too many of them. And, uh, and another choice may be autosynclus catfish, um, but the problem with those is they are um, vegetarians and discus fish like to eat meat. So I need to have a bottom feeder that can f eat meat. And uh, there are not a lot of choices. There's probably some um, assassin snails that I could use. <clears throat> and I actually have some in, in my other tank. So this is my Fluval Flex 15 gallon tank. And I do have some assassin snails in here. You see one in the back there. So yeah, this may be an option for my tank when it comes to a cleanup crew. So as you can probably tell, if I was to do a planted aquarium, I'm going to be very, very limited uh, when it comes to the uh, cleanup crew that I can use to um, go after the leftover food that the fish, uh, discus fish will probably leave behind. So. Maybe I'm going to go with a uh, non-planted setup and if I do that, I have a lot of choices because I could use really, really fine sand on the bottom in order to accommodate a lot of uh, cori uh, catfish, uh, hoplo catfish, uh, reed or ropefish. And uh, there are just a lot, of, a lot more choices like eels even. Uh, there are a lot of fish that like to eat the leftover foods that the discos will probably leave behind. 
So yeah, I will, I will probably start with a planted setup and um, if that doesn't work out in the long run, if it's just too messy, if I cannot keep it clean because I can't reach the bottom with my hands and I cannot find enough uh, you know, fish and invertebrates and snails that keep the, uh, the tank clean for me, uh, then I may just take it all out and go with a, uh, a non-planted setup. So, but let's start with the planted setup and uh, I will do a video on that. We'll tell you what kind of plants I'll be using. Uh, probably the same one that you saw in the video from the King of Dirt Yourself, which is uh, the Dwarf Hairgrass. I think that looks absolutely amazing. It's going to be looking like a, you know, like a New Zealand forest. It looks, looks amazing, I think. Especially when you uh, put some really bright red discus in there, the contrast look going, it's going to look great. So um, then we're going to talk about the substrate for these types of plants, um, you know. So there's going to be a lot of content. So if you think it's going to be uh, interesting to you, stay tuned and um, I will see you next time.